I want to start by pointing out something that Maurice Wilkes said. Maurice Wilkes is the uh, first person to create a program that resided locally in the memory of the computer it ran on. And he said, the real realization came over me with full force that a good part of the remainder of my life was going to be spent in finding errors in my own programs. He recognized very early on that we are, after all, human. We write software, and that software will have errors. And we're, we're going to spend a great amount of our time looking for the causes of those errors. IntelliTrace is a new feature in Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate that is intended to help us as developers find the root cause faster. If you think about a defect, when a defect is discovered in software, the most challenging part isn't writing the code that fixes the problem. That oftentimes is actually part of the, the easier part of the problem, when we see the code and we realize the mistake and we write the code to fix the, the defect. The harder part is figuring out what is causing that problem. When something happens we didn't expect or we're getting a result that wasn't intended, uh, oftentimes it can be really challenging to figure out why that happened. And, and, and sometimes the problem is not obvious. It might be uh, something that's happening in a different part of the software and there's a trickle down effect sort of that, that could be occurring there. So IntelliTrace is designed to help us by providing the sort of shared historical perspective of the test execution. If you think about uh, the tester going through the process of executing that test and reporting when a defect is found, it's great that we have a video recording. That's certainly helpful. It's great that we have a screenshot. Very helpful. We have system information. Also very helpful. What would be really helpful, though, is if we could actually see the code execution as it happened in the tester's environment. And that's what IntelliTrace does for us. IntelliTrace is sort of like a DVR for developers. In other words, it records the events and activities on the system under test, so all of the processing that's happening, and provides that to us in a way that we can pause it, we can fast forward it, we can rewind it, we can play it again, uh, and we can do all this to give us a better avenue for examining the code execution to figure out what potentially went wrong. Now, if you think about things in a DVR, they're recordings. So I can rewind and fast forward as much as I want. I can pause and play back as much as I want. But I can't change something that happened. And IntelliTrace works the same way. It is literally just a recording of the events and activities that occurred on the test environment while the tester was going through the test execution. Let's take a look at how, as a developer, I can use IntelliTrace to quickly find the root cause of a defect. So let's take a look at how a developer can use IntelliTrace to quickly find the root cause of a bug uh, to help streamline this process. I'm going to go back to our demo environment. And now that I'm acting in the role of a developer, I'm going to go ahead and open up Visual Studio. This is Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate. And a common task as a developer might be to you know, come in and open up my bugs list and see what bugs are assigned to me. Maybe I have a notification that a new bug has been assigned to me. And here we can see the bug that we just filed, that actionable bug that will get us started. Booking a flight with invalid dates returns flights, not error. Now in this case, we have all that actionable bug data that's been attached. And I'll, I'll bypass that for the purposes of the demo because you've already seen it. Uh, but more interestingly, as I scroll down, we have these IntelliTrace files. Now, the IntelliTrace files provide us a lot of rich information about what was happening in the test environment as we were uh, running through the test execution. Like I said, this is sort of a shared historical perspective of what was happening. So I can see information about everything that was going on on the uh, machine that was being tested. In this case, it's a single machine test environment. If there is multiple machines involved, I'd have an IntelliTrace file for each machine. And in our case, we were running a test to, um, that was intended to show an error message. We should have seen this error message, you can't return before you leave. But I can see here in the exception data that I do, in fact, have that exception. Uh, it's an argument exception that says you can't return before you leave. But for some reason, uh, even though we had the exception occur, uh, it was never, never shown or never triggered the uh, error message to be shown on the page. So a good place to start, think of IntelliTrace files as a sort of an exploration tool. I want to use them to help me find the root cause of the bug, uh, and hopefully it will help me find the root cause faster. I can double click on the exception, and that will take me into the code. Uh, in this case, it takes me right to where that exception occurred. So I am in the code now, and I can see that there was a new argument exception was thrown, and I can see the error message is you can't return before you leave. And I have a red indicator paused uh, at the bottom here. And you'll notice that I'm actually in active debugging mode. My debugger is attached to the IntelliTrace file, and I'm able to look at the code as if I was debugging it locally. Uh, what's of significantly more interest here is the fact that if I go to my Solution Explorer, I don't even have this source code open on my machine. So I'm really, truly actively debugging the IntelliTrace file to see what happened. Now, in this case, I can see it's 
the booking controller class and I can see that I do have the exception thrown uh, but for some reason it's not being surfaced and that reason is uh, nobody wrote the nobody wrote the catch logic they just put in a to-do comment this is uh, the artifact of perhaps a lazy developer so in this case what I'm going to do is go ahead and stop the debugger and let me open up my solution so I can work on the active code on my machine now the interesting thing here is if my solution was out of sync with what the uh, tester was using to test the code I would then have to go get the correct version based on the build number perhaps that they put in the bug uh, so in this case I want to do a couple things I'm going to change the sort of flow of, of my application so that uh, when I call validate dates, uh, instead of having the exception thrown and caught within that method, I'm going to catch it outside of that method. Sort of what I'm doing here is not necessarily relevant for the purposes of the demo, but uh, this is how we'll fix the problem. So in this case, I'm going to call validate dates, and if an exception is raised, I'll catch the exception and I'll call the create method. This is a model view controller application, and by doing that, we'll create an instance of the view and that error message will be displayed. So I can get rid of the try catch block here, leveraging code snippets to make this go a little faster for us. And now I can see that when validate, state, validate dates is called, if there is a return date that is earlier than the departure date, we'll create the error message and we'll throw the new exception and that will be caught above. So now I can save the file. I'll go ahead and overwrite it. I didn't do a proper checkout. Uh, and we'll build the solution or build the web project. And now what I need to do as a developer is make sure that what I did, the fix that I did, uh, is, in fact actually, is actually the fix that we need. So typically what I would do is go through the process of sort of smoke testing this and you know, walking through the scenario and making sure nothing went wrong. Now because I'm using Visual Studio Ultimate, uh, the test manager is also included. It's installed when I install Visual Studio Ultimate. So I have the advantage of being able to leverage the work that the tester already did. In this case, I can take that test case that they executed previously, I'll go ahead and run it, I'll get Visual Studio out of the way. And now I can start the test. I'm not going to overwrite the existing action recording. I actually want to leverage the action recording that is already there. That action recording is the recording of the tester's uh, keyboard strokes, mouse clicks, things like that. So I want to take advantage of that. So instead of going through the steps manually and entering all the data myself, I'm going to go ahead and click on play and choose play all to replay all of the steps of the test uh, in the way the tester performed them. I'm going to take my hands off the keyboard and mouse. Uh, this is actually a little bit of automation. We call this fast forward for manual testing. And what this does is it takes all of those, um, those steps that the tester performed, the keyboard strokes, the mouse clicks, uh, and it replays them. So you can see it replayed the first step by launching the web app, or excuse me, launching Internet Explorer, and now it's navigating to uh, the web page that we want. There is a little bit of delay here because we do have those diagnostic data tap adapters still running. So those have to be initialized. There's a little bit of a delay because I think we have about four of those things running. The video capture, the, um, the system information, the IntelliTrace file, things like that. So those take a few seconds for initialization. It's a one-time hit. Now you can see we're running through the automation as we go through the steps. It's plugging in all the data that I plugged in when I was going through the test manually. And it clicks on search and you can see sure enough now we get the error message that we are expecting. That's the desired result. So now instead of failing, this is a passing test. So now I can go ahead and indicate that this test passed from my perspective, and I'll save and close that. And now what we'll see is this test is now out of the failed state and into the passed state. So this is my way of saying, hey, this test passed. Now my tester might still run this test as part of their uh, end of iteration test pass or something like that. Just because it's been listed as passed doesn't mean we won't run it again. Uh, in fact, as regression testing goes, that'll be run quite a bit. But most importantly, what you saw was how IntelliTrace can be used to help me really quickly find the root cause of the problem, rather than having to recreate the environment and run through all the steps and you know, put a lot of breakpoints in and, and debug the application. I was able to just quickly look at the events as they were executed in the test application and find the root cause of the problem.